What up, it's Marcus Dynasty from Wall Dads, and if you're new to the channel, we do give away free stuff. This is a free DeAndre Swift jersey. We're going to hit 2K. We're giving it away to one of you guys, and then we can go on to our next giveaway. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to be doing three players to draft into the third round of the Dynasty Rookie Drafts. Now, disclaimer, when it gets to the third round, it starts to get really rough. Now, in previous draft classes, 2021, 2020, there were some players that I actually really liked. Elijah Mitchell, I even liked um, Jarrett Patterson, along those lines. Like, I liked those types of players. This class is super rough. I mean, and so we're going after average draft, posi average draft position between 24 and 36. There's players that I like in the early 20s, like 19 and 20. They don't get to qualify. And there's one or two that I like in the fourth round and beyond. So we're going to talk about those players on the next video. Uh, we're going to start off with my least confident going to my most confident. The first player that we're going to be talking about is a wide receiver. It's the only wide receiver I have. And right now he's being drafted 32 overall. It is Romeo Dubs. Why Romeo Dubs? He's out of Nevada. He runs a 4.7240, which is not sexy. His speed score is 19th percentile. Also, not really sexy. Uh, and his vertical jump is in the 33rd percentile. Also, not super sexy for athleticism. But he's 6'2", 204 pounds. He was drafted in the fourth round. So they did draft him with fourth round capital. And for Green Bay, that means a little bit of something. I mean, when you have a Green Bay team that is, is going to struggle to have targets on the field, with a quarterback who is an amazing quarterback, and that's coming from a Vikings fan. They have they have very limited. They have Christian Watson, who is super raw, and there is some definitely potential big holes in his game. You have Alan Lazard. You have Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. I think Aaron Jones is going to be a huge part in the backfield. You have Tanya coming back from ASC injury. This is purely like. Can I find lightning in a bottle? Can I find Amon Ross St. Brown again? Amon Ross St. Brown, by the way, was much more talented than Romeo Dubs. Romeo, though, has the specific ability to come in and be some targets. And if you can get somebody in the third round that you can trade for a 2023 20, second, oh, that is what we're looking for. That is gold. That is what we're, that's the pure goal out of this whole thing is to try to trade one of these third rounders for a second rounder next year and get basically better draft capital for the future because none of these players that I really like love for the future. <laughs> so that is my number three, you could say, player out of there. It's Romeo Dubs, purely just based off of target share. It's not even based necessarily off of talent. He was in, played in Nevada, played okay at Nevada. I mean, played decent at Nevada, but like nothing crazy that jumps at you. The next player, and the reason for this, there's a couple of reasons. I feel like he fits into this offense. The player that we're going to be talking about is Kyron Williams. And Kyron Williams was drafted in the fifth round. Not a good spot for running backs. There's a couple of things that I do like about Kyron Williams. Number one, he was pre-into going into the NFL Combine, which he did not do very well at, even with his pro day, because we, he ran slow. He was slow. Ryan runs four sixes if we're into the four sevens he's slow um he was potentially going to be a top 15 dynasty overall pick and then get shot down uh right now let's i'm looking at average draft position he is 35th so you're talking about the end of the third round right yeah end of the third round i did the math right <laughs> i was like end of the second round no end of the third round so when you have somebody who's the end of the third round Plays in a Rams offense that doesn't have anybody of his skill set. Kyron Williams is James White. Kyron Williams is J.D. McKissick. Kyron Williams will be the pass catching back for a team that, that he... It, honestly, there's not much of a diff, big difference between him and James Cook. And James Cook plays on a much, they, they, much better draft capital and much better opportunity for him to fit in because Singletary... And Moss are not very strong competitors into that backfield. But look at you have Cam Akers who did not show explosiveness with his, uh, his ACL, his Achilles. And then you have Darnell Henderson who, like, they love and hate. And Sony Michelle's now gone. And so Kyron Williams shows, it can show that he can potentially be utilized with Matthew Stafford, of all things. Mm, theoretic. Do you remember Theoretic? I think I remember Theoretic. <laughs> Anybody else remember Theoretic? Oh, he was a fun player to watch. Um, and so, Kyron Williams. Again, we are just going with purely the odds and hoping that Kyron Williams in the third round 
he starts producing a couple games. A team really desperately needs a running back, and you can trade him again for the 2023 20, second. That's what we're going for. My most confident, and and the reason I think for this is purely, not purely because of opportunity. Uh, purely because of opportunity would be incorrect, but it's Tyler Algier. Out of BYU, there's some things I really like about his tape. There's some things that uh, his pass catching really, really concerns me. Uh, at the next level. I think he's a two-down running back. I, it's funny that Atlanta drafts him because they really have, they have Cordell Patterson, who's like the ultimate receiving running back <laughs> because he's basically a receiver that is just being forced to play in running back and he's doing exceptionally well at it. I don't know why Minnesota ever... I mean, I saw this in Minnesota and I was like, why is Cordell not being in the backfield more? Uh, Tyler Algier is that I'm going to... He's 5'11", 221. I'm going to punch it in between the tackles that... One gap, that three gap, that two gap. If you guys know a little bit about or the the A, the A C B C gap, like he's going to be in that sphere is what he is going to be doing. And for a team, Atlanta is going to be potentially struggling. You got Marcus Mariota, so maybe they do a little bit more run option. There's a lot of big question marks here, but Tyler Algier, fifth rounder, could easily fit in the the rounds of one and two. Like he could he could split. The backfield with Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson is going to be the the ten zones. He's going to be the more touchdown guy. He's going. You're you're basically Tyler Algier. You're looking for is kind of a Mike Davis like. Yes, that does concern me. The fact that Tyler, Mike Davis did not have a particular great year last year, but you're also in the third round, and and Cordell Patterson has to stay healthy again. There is no one else in the backfield. Cordell Patterson gets a little bit banged up or anything else happens to Cordell Patterson or they decide to run it with more run option with Marcus Mariota and Tal Algier. You're talking about a guy again in the third round that you can flip to for the second round. Uh, Zach, or Zach. <laughs> I don't know why I said Zach. Because <laughs> Tal Algier reminds me of, um, I was I was going to say, like not, not Keyshawn Vaughn. The, the, the players that, that remind Tyler G reminds me of are all kind of busts lately, which is not a good, um, not not a great argument here. I mean, but we're in the third round, and there's not a lot of players I like. He just he remind he has opportunity, and when I think of even Elijah Mitchell, because Elijah Mitchell had a huge college dominator, had Trey Sermon, had uh, Raheem Mostert, and you were like, well, they're probably not going to give it to Elijah Mitchell. Tyler Algier has that ability to just run it down your throat and be a potential RB3 at the next level. But again, I, I look at Kyron Williams, who's basically a pass down catching back in a much more competitive backfield. And you have Romeo Dubs, who's, again, going to be not nearly as talented, but I think there, there's targets to be had there. I mean, really, we're we're trying to find needles in haystacks here, guys. The third round is tough. I like this. There's some second round players that I think that, that could definitely succeed at the next level. This third round is just not fun. I don't like the third round. So again, <laughs> this is Marcus with Dynasty Football Dads. I hope you learned something. Oh, I hate the third round. If you have a chance, just trade the 2022 third for a 2023 third. <laughs> and you have a better chance of trying to find somebody next year. All right. So this is Marcus with Dynasty Football Dads. Peace out. Take care. We'll see you again soon. Now turn up.